So last year at the start of the year, I decided to make a video where I look out at the coming year of shows and try to find some that I am excited for. Some of them I enjoyed as much, if not more than I expected to. Others, well, not so much. So today I want to look back on this list and see how right or wrong I was. Let's see how many of these 18 I ended up actually liking and how many I just, well, we'll get into that soon. First, I had My Hero Academia. Still a fanboy, still like Season 3, moving on. Next was Attack on Titan Season 3, which I actually haven't seen yet. I'm considering waiting for Part 2 to watch it all at once, or maybe I'll watch it as I go over the rest of the shows from last year, but either way, I'm expecting to like it, and I love the new opening, but I can't judge it until I actually see it. So then there is Steins Gate Zero. This one took a while for me to really like it, but once I did, it was one of my favorites of the year. So, yeah, the beginning wasn't all that good, but hey, by the end I liked it, so I was right once again. Then there's Sword Art Online Season 3. When I put this on my list last year, I said, if they can keep up exploring the aftermath of the SAO incident, explore the idea of a deep AI, and have some cool action, I may really like Season 3. So let's go through these three things I had hoped for. First, the aftermath of SAO. It is explored some, but more so how to shape in the world and the new technology. So yeah, I think it hits that point at least somewhat. There are lots of interesting ideas with the AI here. Again, they haven't been explored that much, more just presented, but it is only like a fourth of the way through the season, so we'll see where that goes. And cool action, again, not a lot so far, but when they do have cool action, it is cool. So yeah, it hits all three of those points to some degree, and it feels like the best season of SAO yet, one that I legitimately like, not one I'm on the fence about. So I was right about an SAO season being good. I never thought I would say any parts of those sentences. Next, Tokyo Glory. No. Moving on. Then Card Capture Sakura, the clear card new season thing. I wanted to like this, and I kind of did, but I just found it was like far too slow, and the slice of life wasn't interesting, so yeah, wrong on this one, sadly. Then there is Read Life Season 2, or the OVAs, or whatever you, it's called. This was an okay end, but nothing to give a lot of praise for, which is kind of how I feel about Read Life as a whole. I like it, but I don't get all the excitement that some people have for it. But again, my question is, was I right about liking the season 2? And yes, I was, so it goes on that uh, column. Then the new FLCL, which, yeah, I love that probably as much as the original, so I was right here. Then Digimon Try. I'll let my video I did for the 12 days speak for itself here. Bottom line though, no, I did not like this one as much as I wanted to, which saddens me because I love Digimon so much. Then there's the Ito Juni collection, which I never actually saw. It got a really poor reception, making me not want to try it. I guess I can't say I was wrong since I never actually tried it for myself, but I'm not going to just for the sake of this video. Then number 12 I think I'm on is Kokoku, a show I watched like a week ago, and I liked it quite a bit. It was a good thriller with like action and plot twists and lots of surprises about the world. So yeah, that was very enjoyable. I also really enjoyed the motivation for the villain and it had a great last episode. So yeah, very solid show that I would suggest more people try. Number 13 was Darling in the Franks. I thought that this was a show that had a lot of potential. A lot of things that could go right with it. And they did. It was an awesome show that I loved immensely until it kind of fell apart near the end. But what it did right, it really did right. And I still like the show as a whole, so it goes in my I was right about this one box. Then Devil Man Cry Baby, which I did not like as much as I hoped. Yeah, the style was cool, but it didn't really do much for the story itself, and it took a long time to get interesting. And then I found the ending surprisingly unimpactful, despite appreciating the uniqueness. Yeah, I do respect this for being different, but as for when I enjoyed like three episodes out of ten, so no, it goes into my I did not like this category. Number 15 on my list is Maho Shoujo Ore, which is a show I was so excited about, thinking it could be pure stupid fun, which it was for like two episodes. After that, the comedy got old, there's no plots, and I even dropped it before I got to the end. So I guess this wasn't the second season of Twin Tales after all. And then at number 16, I had Caligula. Again, cool concept, 
but when it came to tell you an interesting story, it fell flat and I dropped it. Especially like halfway through the show, I like had no idea like what the main character was after or anything with that. And yeah, just did not care at all. Despite a couple of good episodes. Number 17 on my list was Hisone to Masatan, a show that I made a video of right as it aired, saying it was a hidden gem of the season. And then I watched the rest of it several months later and was let down. It was a show that tried to be very character focused, but with most of the cast being unlikable, and that just didn't work. And then there are so many nagging questions about the plot. I can't say this is bad per se, but I can't say that I liked it much either. So I'm going with a not good category here. And then lastly, at number 18 was Maho Shoujo Site. A show I thought would have any number of reasons why it could be trash, but I was still hopeful about it. And I got one of the best suspense stories of the year, taking a somewhat new take on Magical Girls and showing just the type of story I love from anime. So yes, good one here. And that total gives me 8 good shows, 7 bad shows, and 2 shows I didn't watch from my list of 18, which is 17. Uh, yeah, I apparently can't count. Or can I? There's, like, there's supposed to be 18, um... Oh yeah, I forgot Persona 5 from the original list. I'm playing the game now, did not watch the anime because of that, so yeah, didn't watch that either. Which gives us a grand total of the year of 18 shows I picked, 8 of which I liked, 7 I didn't, and 3 I didn't see. So my ability to pick a good show is basically a coin flip, and that is picking them for my own subjective taste. So yeah, that says something about believing anitubers when they say something is going to be good, or bad, or in the middle, whatever. So thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what shows were you most looking forward to at the start of the year and how did that pan out for you? Were you disappointed? Were you happy with the results or something else? And join me next week when I talk about, I don't even know what I'm talking about next week. Why did I even do that segue to the conclusion? Whatever. Talk to you then.